from Jingle Cross in Iowa City, Iowa. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show, brought to you by our friends over at Wiggle. This week, as Alejandro Valverde wins the World Road Race Championship in Innsbruck, we ask, is he a worthy winner? Mm. Uh, we've also got some very exciting news ourselves about the upcoming cyclocross season. Speaking of which, Sai reports in from the Three Peaks cyclocross, and there's the return of the Wattage Bazooka. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that team sponsor announcements aren't what they used to be. This is the announcement from Team Sunweb that they will be on Cervelo bikes from next year. Don't worry though, the only bars that Dumoulin, Kirschman and Matthews are behind are aero ones. Ah, yes, see what you did there Chris, very clever. Yeah. And we also learned this week that the time is right for a return of GCN's What's It Bazooka? This is Callum Brown, an ex decathlete riding the Urban Hill Climb event in London, where he averaged 925 watts for 1 minute 18. Wow. Only weighs 75 kilograms and can apparently produce in a sprint over 2,000 watts. Well deserved wattage bazooka for him, and if you'd like to nominate someone for next week, the hashtag is right there. Finally, this week in the world of cycling, we learned that Alejandro Valverde is the best rider in the world. At least he was on Sunday. There in Innsbruck in Austria, he converted his previous four bronze medals and two silvers into gold and became the oldest world champion since Joop Zutemelk back in 1985. Don't you think he should have been riding some sort of Masters event, maybe? Yeah, well, he's not <laughs> far off vets, is he? No, not at all. Anyway, he now wears the coveted rainbow bands for the next 12 months, which he ceremoniously received from Peter Sagan on the podium on Sunday, which I thought was a nice touch. Hmm. It was a masterful display, wasn't it? Of timing, tenacity, power, and also tactical astuteness, all qualities which he has used to mass amass a total of 122 pro career victories. Amongst those, four wins at Liège Baston Liège, five at La Flèche Vallon, two at the Classic of San Sebastian, 11 at the World Tour, including one overall victory, three overall victories at the World of Catalonia, and two at the Critérium du Dauphiné, amongst others. <laughs> His win on Sunday then really was the ultimate celebration and the absolute icing on the cake of one of the longest and most consistent careers yeah. we've ever seen. There is an elephant in the room though. For two of those seasons, he was two of those 17 seasons, he was serving a ban. For blood doping, mm. wasn't it? This relates back to Operation Puerto back in 2006. Uh, he was implicated in that in 2007 and so the UCI attempted to block him from racing the World Championships that year in Stuttgart. Their attempt failed and he finished second and got the silver medal there. The following year in 2008, the Tour de France crossed the border into Italy, and whilst I heard he was there, local authorities took a blood sample, which they later matched to one of the bags that had been stored by Dr. Emmanuel Fuentes, who was the man at the center of the Puerto scandal. Valverde continued to deny any involvement in that, but then eventually, four years after that scandal first broke, he was handed a two-year suspension from competition. And, so as you might expect, reactions to his win were mixed, mm. both from fans and from those within the sport. They were. In fact, I tweeted straight after yesterday's race and said, fair play, Valverde. Which I thought was a clever play on words, but it did seem lost on a few people. Perhaps it just wasn't very clever. Uh, for example, there were sceptics, such as Donald McLernan, who said, a sad day for cycling, stops doping and gets better with age. Uh, to the downright angry, uh, this from Davon Pointer, a sad, sad day for cycling. I won't watch any pro cycling next year and I'm feeling sick to the stomach. <laughs> it doesn't stop there though, the views were mixed underneath the race news show yesterday. Jeff Woods writes in with Valverde and rainbow bands makes me sick. No place in modern cycling for people like this. How do they end up being championed and celebrated? It's a joke, this sport just doesn't help itself. But there were a lot of people on the other side of the coin, weren't there? For example, James Roskopet, happy for his win, a deserving one. 
He finally did it. He served his time and everybody deserves a second chance. Uh, we also got somebody young in the office to put up something on Instagram, a story, one of those slider things. Uh, were you happy with Valverde's result yesterday? It seems most of the people were. See, the thing is, with Valverde, there are loads of positives, if you'll excuse the terrible pun. He's exciting to watch. He lights up most races. He's tactically masterful. He's really outfoxed on the road. His experience is, well, second to none. And he's just great to learn from. Well, he is as well. And as you said, he races a lot right from the beginning of the season all the way to the end. And he races to win at every one of those. So from that point of view, you have to say he'll do that rainbow jersey proud next year. And anybody that knows him really well within the sport always says that he's one of the nicest guys in cycling and that there's absolutely no ego when it comes to Valverde. And he gives us all hope that we can be fighting fit and battling for victory at the grand old age of... Well, hold on a second. He was born the same year as me. He's not that old. Well, I think you've aged a little bit better than he has because he looks like he's in his 40s. <laughs> anyway, after 4,800 metres of climbing, seven hours on the bike on the day, 77 race days this year alone, and on the back of that terrible, nearly career-ending injury last year, you can hardly say it was an undeserving victory, in my mind, anyway. Mm. And look at his face after he crossed the line. It clearly meant everything to him. You could almost say it meant the world to him. And that makes racing real to me. It makes racing special. Yeah, emotional. but he is a former dofer. There's just no getting around that fact. Even if you could argue that it's quite rare to find a rider from his, his era that hasn't doped at some point. Yes, he served a ban, but when he came back from it, he didn't really appear particularly apologetic or repentant. Maybe he's not sorry for what he did, or maybe he is, and it's just something that's lost in the language barrier because I don't speak Spanish. No, me neither. I think the problem is that he serves as a reminder of cycling's past that's not really disputable. His career bridges several eras, which I think is probably where people find difficulty with his results. Mm -hmm. But then again, age is hardly his fault, is it? No. But then the choice to dope was entirely his fault, yeah. wasn't it? Even if you could say that perhaps that choice was a much different one back in his era than it is now. Nevertheless, he's got to live with it for the rest of his career. And also there's the fact that there might be a positive long-term effect to having doped at some point. We don't really know. Yeah, okay, doping aside, I think it's hard to find too many negatives with Valverde. His win may not have pleased everyone on Sunday, but then when was the last time that a world champion was universally loved? Even Sagan had haters. Wow. Yeah, there's a very big difference in there between not feeling endearment towards somebody's personality versus being very suspicious about somebody's results. I guess the question is, though, was Valverde's win on Sunday bad for the sport of cycling? I'd kind of argue that it is in many ways, despite what our Instagram slider survey has said. Because the fact is that when somebody like Valverde wins, there will always be question marks hanging over it. There's a caveat there, which means that we kind of have to discuss it. it doesn't matter how nice a guy it is, doesn't matter how much he's cleaned up his act, doesn't matter how exciting he is to watch, and there's no doubt he is exciting. I love watching Valverde race. There's always going to be that doubt in the back of some people's minds. And I think that until his uh, generation have entirely finished competing in the sport of cycling, we just will never be able to draw a line in the sand. Blimey, Dan. Yeah, anyway, we want to know what you think. Let us know in the comments below, but also take a vote on the poll that's up above here. Yeah, get involved. Is Valverde a worthy world champion or not? Anyway, I think I know the secret to his success and consistency, Dan. Do you? Yeah, every day, a small tub of ice cream throughout the season. His weight stays immaculately. Does he really? Yeah. Apparently. I can't help but think that if we employed the same daily routine as I've added, that we wouldn't be quite as good as he is. But nevertheless, it's a nice thought, isn't it? Let's put it to the test. Right, on to something completely different now. Uh, we're going to hand over to Sai, who at the ripe old age of 36, has just proven that age is no barrier to finishing well off the pace at the Three Peaks Cyclocross. Well, not in the studio today because I'm most likely recovering from what we've just been doing, which is the Three Peaks Cyclocross, the world's hardest cyclocross race, self-proclaimed and also undisputed, I think. Oscar just smashed it on his first attempt, finishing eighth. I uh, finished in my best time yet, but my worst position, so I rolled around in 20th. Oscar, what, what did you make of that? Because it's pretty unique, isn't it? Yeah. Uh... It was uh, when, when we start, I, I felt uh, good and I wanted to, to try to go ahead. But then when I had to walk, some people uh, take over me. And yeah, I'm amazed the, how the people can do the downhills with this kind of bike, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it's also nice to see with a, with a unique bike, you can go like in road, off road, 
stones downhill, uphill, you know, yeah. and it's it's nice. Yeah. So I heard a, a great summary in that it's a race where you're never on the right bike. So there's there's uh, 20 miles of tarmac, and you're always on a cyclocross bike, and then there's 18 miles of rocks and gravel and and you are never on the right bike because you need a mountain bike or indeed for four miles you want no bike at all because you have to walk because it's so brutal so uh, anyway we've got a full video coming up on GCN we've got Oscar's experience over on uh, GCN Espanol as well and we so, took some notes for comeback no next year well, so Oscar's going to win next year <laughs> I'm going to do exactly what I always do which is finish between 15th and 20th hopefully and uh, yeah what a race, huh? What a race. Yeah, amazing. It's now time for cycling shorts. We shall kick off cycling shorts this week with our very own exciting announcement. And you mud lovers are going to be over the moon about this because we have a full season of live cyclocross right here on the Global Cycling Network. So that includes the Super Prestige, the DVV Trophy, the Sudal Classics and the Brico Cross Series. It's all over on our dedicated Facebook page at GCN Cycling. So head over there and give it a follow because then you'll get a notification every time we go live. Launching this weekend with the first two rounds of the Brico Cross Tour worldwide, except for North America, Belgium and the Netherlands. Fear not though, if you are in America or Canada, as the following week we have the first round of the Super Prestige kicking off in Gieten. Very excited about the upcoming cross series, I must admit. In fact, maybe we should make one of those beer tents here in the studio for us to walk through as the ride yeah. is racing around. I like the sound of that. I'd be up for that. <laughs> uh, right, on yesterday's GCN Race News Show, I went through most of the main results from the World Championships, but over in Austria, it appeared that as much was happening away from the bikes as was happening on it. We'll start with the CPA elections. Yep, and it was a landslide victory for Gianni Bunio, who will serve his third successive term after the vote. He won with 379 to David Miller's 96, although Italy, Spain and France were all voted for by representatives, so perhaps it was closer than it first appeared. Oh yeah, we'll never know, I guess, will we? Uh, the UCI also announced a number of reforms, and amongst those was the much welcome news that there will be a minimum wage in place for female pros from next year. So apparently the aim is that there will be five top tier World Tour teams in 2019, with the hope that by 2023 that number will have grown up to 15, and also by 2023 they are hoping that the minimum wage will be equivalent to what it is in the pro continental ranks in the men's now, which is just over 30,000 euros. Yeah, it's good to see some concrete plans in place. Mm. The UCI also mentioned that next year we'll see the first ever EMTB World Championships and that in the not too distant future there will be an eSports online virtual World Championships endorsed by the UCI. Mm. A bit like Zwift really. Yeah, well in fact we kind of held an unofficial Tuesday night World Championships just last week, didn't we, live here <laughs> on GCN. And I think what we learned from that is that James Lousley Williams, Hank, is basically shooing for the victory, isn't it? I can't see him being If there's a gurning rainbow jersey on offer. That's a great effort, Hank, but I don't think you've got any chance once Lasty gets involved. No chance at all. Anyway, on to racing of a different kind, and Team Great Britain took gold in the unofficial World Quad Tandem Championships. Two nations took part, the other one being Canada. And it looked like great fun. And it was for a good cause. It was, yeah. In fact, they were raising money for three separate mental health charities by racing all the way from Portland right down to San Francisco. And as you say, Chris, it does look like great fun to the point where I'm considering uh, taking part myself next year. You won't make the team. Oh, I guess there's only four spots, aren't there, per nation? I can try and qualify, though. Well, it's good to have a goal, Dan. <laughs> also raising money last week was Peter Williams, who raised nearly £40,000 for a brain tumour charity in memory of his late daughter, Ellie. Peter rode the 200 miles from Bristol Children's Hospital to Land's End on his late daughter's bike. Yeah, this was uh, something that pulled at your heartstrings, isn't it, this yeah. story? It must have been very hard at over six foot to ride that bike for 200 miles, so he had to stand up most of the way. Obviously, incredibly motivated and incredibly determined, and I just can't imagine how emotional he must have felt when he crossed that finish line. Incredible stuff. Yeah, it was, and a huge well done to you, Peter, from all of us at GCN. What could you do in under four minutes, Dan? Uh, well, I couldn't, but some people can run a mile, can't they, in that time? Yeah. Quick. Four kilometre team pursuit? 
Also, if you're quick, yeah, you can make a cup of tea, can you? A good cup of English breakfast tea. Yeah, properly. or maybe a VO2 max interval. Yeah, you can do quite a lot, actually, can't you? In fact, I think my wife and I have probably made our son Jude in quite a lot less than four minutes. That's a little bit too much information, I think. Anyway, let's get to the point. Thieves in Eindhoven broke into the Cycle Trend store and stole 33 custom bikes, totaling 100,000 euros in value, all in less than four minutes. Wow. That is a lot of bikes. Isn't it? Imagine yeah. getting back into your store and seeing it empty. It'd be horrific, wouldn't it? Yeah. Kind of goes without saying, but if you do have any information that you could give Cycle Train, which could lead to the capture of these criminals, I'm sure that they would absolutely love to hear from you. Right, let's finish cycling shorts this week with some new tech that has a tenuous link to cycling uh, because Sony have released some new wireless headphones. Hmm. I know what you're thinking. And you'd be right, cycling with headphones, especially noise cancelling headphones, probably isn't the safest idea. But Sony have released the Xperia Ear Duo headset, which could prove to be a game changer. It could be, because they're basically the opposite, aren't they, to most conventional noise cancelling headphones, because they boast technology, which they've called the dual listening experience. So basically it combines whatever you're listening to with some external environmental sounds, and further to that, if it does hear something external coming towards you, like a car, it actually reduces the volume of whatever you're listening to, which in theory could make having headphones in whilst you're cycling reasonably safe. Yeah, because then as the volume drops, you can hear the car coming and oh, yeah. you know something's happening. Well, we should test them and get back to you. Giveaway time now, and we've got another fantastic prize for you this week. It comes off the back of Sai's recent visit to California, and specifically the Oakley HQ over there. Five pairs of Oakley flight jackets to give away in the colour of your choice if you're one of our lucky winners. In the description just below this video you'll find a link, follow that and you'll have all the details that you need to know to put yourself in with a chance of winning. Good luck. Yeah, nice, good prize that. For the winners of last week's Pedled Brooks giveaway we have Kuhn Barra from Belgium, Brett Carra from Australia and Michael Walsh from Ireland. Brett Carter, in case there's a Brett Carr out there that thinks that he's, uh, that he's won a prize. Uh, if we haven't already been in touch with you, we will do so very shortly indeed and get that prize out to you as soon as possible. Well done to you all. Sorry, Brett. Tech of the week now. So we hand you over to two John Cannings who will be talking about a brand new bike. He will. Not just any brand new bike either. The one that Tom Dumoulin and his Team Sunweb teammates will be using in 2019 and beyond. Apparently they couldn't use it in their promotional video at the start of this GCN show due to contractual issues, but it looks pretty neat. Over to you, John. Thanks guys. Well, this week we've got confirmation of that spy shot that we were sent in a few weeks back. It's that new Cervelo S5. And highlights of that include a 13% stiffer head tube and a 25% stiffer bottom bracket. And <laughs> loads more of that to come on Thursday. But we've got loads to get really excited about, so don't miss out. Coming up Thursday, don't miss it. Our weekly GCN inspiration now, which is of course your chance to win one of three Wiggle voucher amounts because this segment is sponsored by our friends over at Wiggle. First place receives £100 of voucher to spend on whatever you want on their online shop. Second place is £75 and third place is 50 And that third place this week is going to... That one goes to... Ryan from Roosevelt Lake in Arizona. This photo was taken during the 2017 Project DM Triathlon, a local event, extreme triathlon here in Arizona that consists of a 2.4 mile swim, 126 mile bike ride with over 10,000 feet of elevation gain and a 26.2 mile run to the highest mountain peak in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, we've given this prize despite the triathlon references really, haven't we? Here's a good photo. Uh, well done to you. Second place goes to Robert. Uh, this is from North Carolina over in the USA. A good group of friends known as the Velo Bros travel from all parts of the US and meet up to do an annual epic ride full of suffering and plenty of beer. Dan Lloyd should join us next year. I should do. Amazing riding, great views and beer. Doesn't get better than that. But we do have a winner of the £100 voucher, and that is... We do. It's Johnny Folker from Slovakia. Wow. Not a lot to say about this picture, other than well, it's stunning. You look on it in awe, don't you? That's an amazing photo. Yep. Yeah, thoroughly deserved, I think. Uh, don't forget that to put yourself in with a chance of winning one of these three voucher amounts, all you need to do is upload your inspirational photos to our uploader. There's a link to that in the description just below. Uh, or you can use the hashtag GCN Inspiration and we look at those photos over on Instagram. Good luck for next week. It's now time for Hack 
forward slash bodge of the week. It is, and the first hack forward slash bodge comes in from Bulgaria, sent by Maxim. Complete frame set of handlebars and seat posts made from construction grade steel profiles. Uh, incredible detail here, even with disc brakes. Um, it kind of looks like a bodge, but to be perfectly honest, anybody that attempts to make their very own bike uh, has my admiration. So I'm going to say yeah. hack. What are you going to say? I'm going with hack as well. He's probably got custom geometry and everything. Mm. Look at that stem as well. Yeah. Neat looking bike. Good work. In some ways. <laughs> Next up, this uh, is from Chris and James sent. Oh, this is a bike for Chris and James. Oh, I see. It's for you too. I see what he's done now. It came in from Vite. I don't know if you two be capable of riding it, quite frankly. Firstly, there's quite an imbalance in weight between you two, isn't there? Yeah, and normally I sit on Hank's wheels, so it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Yeah, yeah to <laughs> sit on his saddle there instead. How about this one from Larb? Ooh, I used to love those Kona Stinkies when I was a kid. Custom made e bike, though. Kona Stinky. Yeah, we get a few custom e bikes sent through, don't we? And most of them look like bodges. Yeah. This one included. Uh, sorry about that, Larb. I don't think it's yours, but anyway, thanks for sending it in. This one was sent in by Katie uh, at the World Championships, in fact, in Innsbruck. A cut above the rest, really, that bike, isn't it? It's your saddle height, Dan, as well. Yes, I'd fit on that very nicely indeed, <laughs> wouldn't I? Yeah, well, we quite often get these two as well, like the, the double height bikes. It must be some sort of fashion going on somewhere around the world, but uh, you wouldn't catch me riding one of them. Ride with a view, maybe? Oh, yeah. Tall hedgerows? Yeah, you'd be able to see any hazards upcoming, <laughs> even in a peloton, wouldn't you? But you wouldn't get much shelter. Graham Porter says, no question whether this is a hack or a bodge. <laughs> Hopefully, this can shame my mate Sam into changing his ways. At least it distracts from the mix-matched bar tape. I was gonna say, as much as the <laughs> scourer that he's using for an elbow pad there on his bar extensions, I can't help but see that there's white bar tape, well, more grimy gray bar tape mm. on one side and black on the other. Definite bodge right there. Should've used the scourer on the bar tape. Sort your shizzle out, is what. Uh, old people like me try and say <laughs> without being cool. Uh, next up, uh, we've got finally, I think, the uh, compulsory chain keeper. So many different variations of chain keeper, Chris. It really astounds me each and every week. This one comes in from OMG0160, cotton reel and seat clamp chain keeper made and in use. What's the point? Do you know what? Over on Instagram at the moment, there is some sort of sponsored video uh, of a company selling a chain keeper. The <laughs> amount of times I've been tagged <laughs> underneath this video in the comments really is quite astounding. Um, what? But what do they do? Keep your chain nice and neat whilst you don't have a wheel in the back of your bike. It's a great invention, just admit it. Uh, keep sending in your hacks or bodges, the hashtag is GCNHack. Uh, we look at Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Uh, get them in for next week's show. Caption competition time now, and this was last week's photo. Yeah, this was Mass Pedersen on the podium up in Belgium for the Neuro Metropole race. And we have a winner, that winner being Tim Bishop. Caption, when asked if he could name the birthplace of Napoleon, Mass replied, of course I can. Which I thought was a very, very clever play on words. Uh, far better than anything that we could have ever come up with, quite frankly. Well done to you, Tim. Get in touch on Facebook with your address. We'll get that GCN Camelback water bottle out to you. I forgot to get one out. Looks like this. Uh, right, moving on to this week's caption photo. Uh, it's this one of Remco Evenepoel having won the World Championships in Innsbruck at junior level. This is normally the point at which we give you our first caption effort. We've spent the last 45 minutes or so trying to think of one. Uh, we've come up with about five ideas each. The most we've got out of the other person is about a smirk, wasn't mm. it? We've been it's particularly that. poor. But we have every confidence in you lot, particularly with people like Tim, who are so very clever with captions. So get stuck in. There has to be a funny caption for this somewhere. It's just not coming from us. Cramp! Good. See? Mm. Good luck to you all. Before we let you know what's coming up on GCN over the next seven days, four of our favourite comments from the previous seven. Uh, this one came underneath Sai's attempt at a KOM in Bristol, which he failed. Don't want to rub it in, Sai. Uh, but also kicking him whilst he's down is SAF1981. Rumour has it the actual KOM owner did it on a steel frame with a basket on the bars whilst eating an Aero Greg's pasty. Pretty harsh that, Dan. It is, yes. Uh, and then this next one came in underneath Emma's new core workout video yep. for cyclists. This is Tay Young An. What I love about Emma's presentation of core workouts is that unlike other fitness instructors, she doesn't make it look easy. Oh dear, she yeah. won't like reading that, will she? I picked all of these, by the way. Slagging off various presenters, not myself. How many did you write? 
Well, yeah, got a lot of pseudonyms. Uh, I also enjoyed this one that came underneath seven of the best riders who've never won the World Championships. And uh, we put two in there that had the chance this year. And incredibly, they both won. Uh, Ivan put three days later, both Alejandro and Anna won gold. GCN does it again. Uh, to which somebody replied, now the presenters have invented the anti-curse. Yeah, we'll take that. And um, well, that's quite impressive. Yeah, it's a bit more friendly as well. L, simply L. Season one, episode nine, Emma wins her first cyclocross race. Season two, Emma becomes world champion. Yeah. It's inevitable. Probably right, El. Yeah, you can imagine that happening, couldn't you? In uh, just about a year's time, Emma's suddenly the world champion in that discipline. Uh, speaking of which, she continues her cross series this coming Wednesday in a video where she is looking into cornering technique, masterclass on that. Uh, on Thursday, we're going to have a look at the top 10 coolest riders of all time. And on Friday, as ever, it's Ask GC Anything. Yep, on Saturday, Emma brings a guide to everything with women's cycle clothing. Sunday, Ollie's Everesting attempt. Pretty good. Worth pretty watching that one. one. Yep. Yeah, he hasn't stopped banging on about it, has he, since? <laughs> Monday's GCN Racing News Show with Dan. Yeah, and on Tuesday, of course, we will be back in the set for episode 300, in fact, of the GCN show. I haven't planned anything special, I'm afraid, just yet, but uh, maybe we'll do that this time next week. Uh, before we finish with this part of the show, actually, we're going to give a call out to shop.globalcyclingnetworks.com because we've got some new products. You've seen Chris sporting this special Union Jack t shirt. We've also got. USA. The American flag here, uh, for all of those of you who like the American flag or are from America. In fact, we've got a lot of countries these days covered with our various t-shirts over at the shop. However, if we have missed your country out or indeed your favorite flag, just let us know by contacting us at the shop. And if we get enough requests for the same country, we might well feature that one at some point too. Also back in stock by popular demand is the original red GCN casual jacket. So if you like that and you missed out first time around, you can pre-order that over at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, a link to which is on the screen right now. We shall finish, as ever, with Extreme, Extreme Corner. Well done, Chris. We didn't even rehearse that. You just watched the show so many times. Uh, this week, it features our friends, who were just the other side of the wall there, in fact, from the EMBN channel. Uh, they attempted to climb the slab over in Bristol, which is not too far from here. If you've never heard from it, it's a very, very steep concrete slab, and I would not attempt to ride a bike up it, even an e-bike. If you look at it, you wouldn't believe anyone would go up or down it, actually. I know, I know. Let's see how they got on. I was getting a bit scared when we got to you because you've basically got a cliff and you get close to that cliff edge and you do not want to go down there. So this is a long way up. Holy moly. Go, you got it, you got it, you got it. You guys dig in, dig in. Go dig in! You got it, 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 you got it! Edge of your seat stuff, Yeah, that, wasn't it? I really enjoyed watching that video, but I still would never attempt that myself. I'd I don't know. Petrified. Well, you think you would? It, look, it looks like a bit of fun to me. Yeah, uh, okay. Well, I'll leave that to you young people. Uh, right, that's the end of this week's GCN show. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, give it the thumbs up just down below this video. Uh, we will now send you over to Size KOM Challenge video, which he failed, let's remind you. Uh, if you haven't yet watched that, I've spoiled the ending, but you can find it. It was really an interesting video, actually, and it's just down here. James and I are going to go and take that KOM, though. Yeah, probably will. He'd be gutted, wouldn't he? <laughs>